How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. These three missionary sisters, servants of the Holy Spirit, are on their way to bring the good news of love, hospitality and compassion to those who have been deprived of a home in their own country. When I'm transferred to Birmingham community, I was looking for an apostolate. Then I approached our cathedral in Birmingham. And from there, they directed me to the St. Chad Sanctuary. I've been working in the sanctuary for almost three years. I go there twice a week. I have been working in sanctuary since October 2015. St. Chad's Sanctuary is a place of welcome and hospitality for asylum seekers, refugees and immigrants. It was started by Sister Margaret Walsh, Infant Jesus Sister, and is supported by St. Chad's Cathedral, the Salvation Army and many friends. Well, I was involved in the project out in Smedic, which is about four miles away from here, and we worked with asylum seekers and refugees. And soon we began to realize, we visited them in their homes. And then many of them weren't there anymore when we went back to knock on the doors. We began to realize that they had been refused asylum. And we wondered where they were, where they had gone to. And soon we began to gather the evidence and gather, hear the stories of people having to come into the city and wait for appointments in order to to get help. And they came to the Refugee Council, and it is located quite close to here, near the St. Chad's Cathedral. And I knew that they came early in the morning, they waited in queues outside, they went in, they got a voucher to come back later, and they had nowhere to go. So the inspiration was, we've got to give them a little bit of shelter, a little bit of a place where they can wait. It was as simple as that just a place where people can wait near to where they were gathering. And it happened to be near St. Chad's Cathedral. So I came into St. Chad's Cathedral and I said, Let's, can we do something? So it, uh, that was the beginning of it. It's a project which is supported by the St. Chad's Cathedral and the Salvation Army. And this is the building. And the first people who helped me after that to actually to repair it, to clean it, to prepare it, were asylum seekers and refugees that I had helped in Smethwick. Then, as time went on, more volunteers came forward to prepare the place, and then we soon found that they needed clothing, <laughs> that they needed hygiene products, that they needed food, they needed refreshment, and, various, and of course they needed English. And that was it. So more and more volunteers began to gather around the project and so now we are, we continue to, to provide all those facilities and do, we do welfare advice also. Situated right in the heart of Birmingham City, the doors of St. Chad's Sanctuary are open five days a week for refugees and asylum seekers. What these weary travellers find inside this welcoming three-storey building is more than clothing and food. It's compassion, warmth and a home in many ways. In the sanctuary we have a great value for hospitality and compassion. When they come they are quite traumatised, stressed. Many of them are unable to communicate even if they understand us, they are unable to speak because of the trauma that they have gone through. Understanding their mental situation, we make sure that they feel at home. They feel very comfortable. They are neither challenged or questioned. One day, one lady came. She was very, very big in size. We were not taking bigger sizes because our guests were very thin. So I went to the basement where we stocked the things and I found something. She was so grateful that I managed to get some clothing for her. She went. Next time when she came, luckily I was at the reception. She just came and said, Ma'am, can I speak to you? I cannot forget that day. I don't know how she felt at home with me. This is the second time I'm seeing her. She called me aside and said, 
can I get some kind of counseling? I asked what kind of help um, you are looking for. I am gang raped. This child is the pregnancy due to the gang rape. For a moment, I got no words to say. I didn't know where to look because this is the first time I'm coming face to face with the person who is being gang raped. I consoled her, I said I will see what I can do. So I talked to Sister Margaret, we made other arrangements as we are not able to give that help in our place. So when you ask what is your great experience, there are many great experiences which is just fiddling through your mind, the faces, the eyes which are able to cry, which cannot provide tears, but their heart is non-stop weeping. I chose the name Sanctuary because I, I wanted it to be just that, a place that people could, where people could feel safe, where they could have a space where nobody was going to judge them, like a church sanctuary. And that is what we tried to make it and keep it as the years have gone on. We have come up to 120 a day, that within four hours of time, sometimes it is up to 50. Surely we have 50 to 70 people in a day. In the afternoons we give them English classes. There is different types of classes, that is uh, recreational English, drop-in sessions. To relax we have some art sessions, a place where they can come and have a chat, relax, where they feel at home, they are not questioned. We have a religious education. Sister Margaret is taking that session. In that session, she gives them freedom to express their religious attitude, understanding about their own religion. Since I started to work, I can see the number of the people have increased, the nationalities have increased, and now especially we face more and more families with kids. Most of it is done by volunteers, including a number of servants of the Holy Spirit. And so, in fact, there are three of you here at the moment, but in the project in, in Brushstrokes also, your sisters came to help. So I think your congregation has a, you know, a claim on both those projects because you, you know, you've been so much part of it what I've done for a long time. There are so many things to do, from sorting the clothes in basement, keep the traffic flow in crossroads, distributing the food and also the clothes in the second floor, and also welcoming them, register them, give them a cup of tea, and make them feel comfortable and also welcome. Usually I stay in the counter to give coffee to the people. I do the sorting. And upstairs we uh, distribute the, the clothing for the, the refugees. And uh, I also join the uh, recreational English in the afternoon. Be happy. Second thing, we're going to make friends. Make some new friends. There are so many sections in the sanctuary. So wherever I am needed, wherever we run short of staff or volunteers, I get into that section and work. As the donations come in, we need to sort it out. Then we need to refill the room where we distribute to the people. We have two containers where we stock the things and I also prepared a graph so we know what we are running short in our website we inform the people or we advertise what we are running short. There are times I was at the computer where I registered the people. 
I enjoyed that area because we need to talk to different nationalities. I was so grateful to our congregation that I can speak five languages. Russian I can use after a long time in England because there are quite a few people coming who speak Russian. I start to learn Arabic. I had a great experience of someone who could not speak because the person coming from Russian speaking country and when I asked in kak jala kak was sabud what is how are you what is your name in Russian she just flew to me and embraced because she found someone who can I can communicate oh she non stop she spoke It is really challenging because most of the time when I meet some of these refugees who cannot speak English and when they share their problems and they are really traumatized. When you listen to them, you can see the, the face lighted up. What I like most uh, in working in sanctuary is meeting different people. It is very physical work, but meeting people and talk to them somehow give me energy and the other thing i see is a commitment and also the willingness of volunteers so many volunteers that they gave up their own work or they have been retired and they came to sanctuary to give their full of their heart to people most of the support we get comes from the parishes. There are good people who, extraordinary people for six years come here regularly, bringing from the back of their churches, clothing which has been collected, food which has been collected, and they bring it here, and we, we then distribute it. There are other groups as well. For example, we've got Costco, and we've got um, Greg's, and the other thing, of course, are the extraordinary volunteers that we've got. We have over 100, maybe 130 volunteers. And that's how the project is run, really. A Syrian young mother, when I was in children's room and asking me to help her uh, choosing the uh, clothes for children. And then while I was taking the basket down and I heard the, um, her sobbing, you know, she was crying, so I just, knelt down beside her and asking her what was happening. So she was um, talking to me how they flew from home and how lucky they were that they arrived here in this country and so many people look after them while her family, her mother and father, husband, mother and father back at home Nobody looked after them and how they were there, now she doesn't know. So she was just um, thankful for what we have done in that place. So for me, little time like that to listen and understand and to respect those people and to know that their stories are very fallible. The people who come here, Often they're quite nervous, I think, because we see many of them at a very early stage of their appealing for asylum. They may only have arrived in the country a week ago. So by the time we see them, they're quite traumatized and they're cold. So you have to provide a very warm welcome so that they can relax a little bit. And soon, you know, very quickly, they begin to realize that we're there to welcome them and we're there to give them what help we can. And, um, and they're very, very grateful. And they remain grateful for years. And also, for many of them, we are their family. They regard us, as time goes on, as their family in England. When they get settled, they come back, they write, they send a card, or make us know how they experienced love, felt at home. Once they are able to speak, they express their, how they felt in that place. Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Abu Bakr Sheikh. I am from Sudan. Uh, when I came to Sancha Sanctuary, I am not uh, understand English. I can speak English, but now my English is I speak English and I uh, understand. 
They also helped me, give me some clothes and some food. As a ripple effect of goodwill, Mohammed has committed himself as a volunteer at the very place where he once received help. First time when I come here, help me, and uh, I feel good. And also, me, I need help people. Same, the first time I come here, help me. This place good, uh, clothes, shoe, yeah, good, nice uh, um, location, space, nice. Uh, my daughter, uh, two daughter, one boy, husband. Uh, continue two, uh, four, six month every day. Clothes, shoe, uh, regular. Thank you. My name is uh, Joseph Richard. Uh, I came to UK about uh, nine months ago. Uh, I'm from I'm from Sudan. I like the sanctuaries. I get many help from clothing, food, English classes, uh, religion, religion classes, and uh, meeting people, meeting new friends. Uh, it's a nice place. Uh, I think everybody involved in the sanctuaries. The funds are just like the practical provision, they come through donations. We have wonderful benefactors who, who just give us the money unrestricted. They just, they don't ask any questions, they just know we're going to spend it properly and be good stewards of what we get. And so at the moment that's where most of our funds come from. We, we don't get any government funding. We are fundraising. As the time goes on, we, we need to employ staff, and so when you're talking about salaries, you're talking about very big money. So in the background, this is part of my work, raising, appealing for funds. The challenge I feel the most is when you see them, first time they came without any family. A little boy told me that, see, I'm here, but my mom and dad are in Palestine, and my uncle just uh, died before I, I came here. I came with uh, friends or family. So seeing the uh, suffering of them, I feel like, you know, I can't do more to help, just listen to them. They come to the sanctuary because they know that somebody would listen to them and they are being helped. A young man from Syria, he came and uh, showed me his wound here in his stomach. And he told me, look, look, here, look, yeah, look at my wound. They, they sh shoot me here. I thank God that I'm still alive. My brother uh, died, but I'm still alive. And what they hope is live in peace without war. When we are having this um, uh, recreational English, the word swimming came up. Somebody said, what does swimming mean? And said, others would answer, in the river, whatever. And then this man, young man asked, I know swimming. I, sw I did swimming. How did you swim, the teacher said. Then he was moved into tears. And when he was saying that, no, he, he came here in the boat, and the boat was sinking. They were all sunk. Many died and the rescuer came, threw the barrels on whatever the rescuer and put them and he grabbed the barrel, following that barrel for eight hours, how, how many hours, and he was able to survive. When he was sharing that everybody in the group, because we have more or less 20, 20 students, I mean refugees, um, in, the, in the class, moved to tears and there was complete silence. I was also moved that there's even the teacher. He thought he would die at that time, and he was very, very happy that he is alive. I'm very happy, and I'm so grateful to God, this opportunity he gave to me to work. As we know, it is the worst situation after the Second World War. Our world is facing the refugees crisis. And to become part of that, and help the people. It is a luck. 
is a great blessing i think it is heartbreaking to hear their story and then i recognize what i am doing is just a drop in the ocean i am very happy to, for this privilege to work with these refugees and uh, i am looking forward to do more whatever i can do as simple as i am doing now but uh, to intensify also my love for the congregation oh it's an instrument for me to do this uh, work with the refugee beside it is also the main priority of our congregation in what really a privilege i'm very very happy in um, privilege the dream or the motto of our founder um, may the heart of jesus live in the hearts of all people And this somehow strengthened me and give me courage and also hope in me that what I give in very little uh, amount, just a cup of tea, can make people happy. I feel thankful, thankful that I could witness and help so many people in a very small way. I thank God for this call for this opportunity and I feel, as I said, always energized and they teach me how to pray every day. So I'm, I'm thankful for God and also for congregation for this. It's a tremendous privilege to be part of it. It's a tremendous privilege. That's, that's how I feel every day. What a privilege it is to be on the journey with, with people who are in this and it brings the gospel alive. I feel very proud of our congregation. As per our charism, we are frontier missionaries. We focus on the signs of the times and move according to signs of the times. Here again, we have proved that we live our charism. As we see or came to know the refugee crisis, we are jumping into action. Our sisters are ready and we are starting a community in Greece and we are not forgetting the priority or the most needy in the world and we are ready to go wherever we are needed. And I am happy, I am part of that. Dear God, let your will for me be known. Use me, O oh God, as your creation. When a kind word needs to be spoken, use my voice. When a load needs to be lifted, use my back. When a hug needs to be given, use my arms. When a journey needs to be taken, use my feet. When a message needs to be delivered, use my mind. When a friend needs to be loved, use my heart. In all things, in all ways, use me, God, as your instrument of love, faith, peace and tranquility.